love for me he died In my stead he bled on Calvary Once for all Christ rescued me What's the big deal? Why all the excitement? Folks say to me wherever I go Why get so loud? Why all the emotion? There is no cause to make such a show If they only knew the change in me When I found a hope that set me free I can't help but shout For I know without a doubt I have a hope. I have a hope. I have a hope. It's not just emotion. I have a hope. I have a hope that anchors my soul. It's more than a dream. More than a dream. It's more than a notion. This hope that I have has lived through the ages. He's never changed, he's always the same. When I read his word, he just walks through the pages. Something goes through me when I hear his name. His name is Counselor and Friend. And he is the one on whom I depend. His word is my sword, yes, Jesus is Lord. He is my hope. I have a hope. I have a hope. It's not just emotion. I have a hope. I have a hope that anchors my soul. It's more than a dream. It's more than a dream. It's more than a notion. built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, The wonder of wonders as she looked on his face That this little boy spoke the worlds into place The stars and the moon shining brightly on them The earth and the sun She heard his small cry That this voice had thundered On Mount Sinai The small hand she held So tenderly Had made a dry path Through the mighty Red Sea Became flesh.
was given for me. The Almighty came down and walked among men. The wonder of wonders, He died for my sins. The wonder of wonders as she looked down and smiled that he was her maker as well as her child he created the womb that had given him birth he was god incarnate come down Oh, how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men. The wonder of wonders, He died for me.
Amen, amen. Praise the Lord for that. And salamat po sa uh, mensahe ng kanta na nag-remind sa atin ngayong umaga kung ano ang ating responsibility. And again, none other than but to preach the word. And I'd like to greet everyone a beautiful morning. And praise God that we're back. And praise God we're here by God's grace and by God's mercy only that we can have this broadcast. And I praise God for what happened this morning, supper breakfast, and even now. And I'd like to greet everyone a beautiful morning and welcome everyone po sa ating programa ngayon. Dito po sa People for His Name um, Online Ministries, Baptist Church Online Ministries, dito po sa ating Workman's Treasure Study Series. And today, I Tuesday, and every Tuesday po mga kapatid, as we know that we are studying about the rightly dividing 101 and we are so excited po mga kapatid sa mga pag-uusapan po natin today sa mga dapat nating deal I and mean, discuss lalong lalo na sa right division sa issue or sa teaching ng right division and i hope po mga kapatid the lord is giving you a wonderful day ngayon to prepare us today and may god help us and bless us uh, ngayong umaga and ng kanyang mga salita. Good to see everyone. Good to see some brethren dito sa Zoom. At ganun din, uh, maging ganun din sa atin pong uh, dito sa meeting room po natin. Amen. And uh, salamat po sa mga kapatiran na ngayon. Na nan- I mean sa FB Live. Salamat sa mga kapatiran na kasama na natin ngayon sa FB Live. Amen. So good to see you here. Let's greet one another. Good to see Mother Mary with us this morning. Good morning, Mother Mary. And I saw also, I see also Sister Josie. Amen. Amen. Because Sister Josie, parang, parang bumilog ang mukha. Tumaba. Parang madaming nakain. Parang hindi ko na nakilala. Oh yeah, Sister Josie. Thumbs up nga, thumbs up. Sister Josie ba? Uh, yon Sister Josie nga. Walang, walang ano eh. Walang. <laughs> Wala umaga. And also, Mother Mary, good morning sa inyo dyan. And good morning sa ating host, si Brother Joma. Magandang umaga, Brother Joms. Thank you for your availability. And even then, kay, uh, kasama din natin ang mga bukod. Ngayong umaga, bukod family. And bukod tangi naming, uh, naming kapitbahay dito, kalapit lang. no. So si Brother Johnny also. Si Brother Johnny and, and the Makulangan family, good morning. Kasama din natin si Brother Mark and Sister Sally. Also dito sa meeting room and ganun din dito sa atin pong uh, si Brother Vince din. Si Brother Vince. Uh, kasama natin si Brother Vince de la Cruz. Amen. So magandang umaga po sa ating lahat ng dito sa Zoom. Dito din tayo sa atin pong Facebook Live. Kasama natin ang ating comrade na si Pastor Cesar Kabungkal. Amen. Magandang umaga Pastor Cesar. Amen. Sabi niya, good AM Evangelist. We are excited for the the training and look forward god will allow yes yes it's god willing and the lord is willing amen and see you soon my brother and excited for the sweet fellowship once again and most especially around his word amen and sister merlin also parting good morning sister merlin and good to have sister merlin also by the way si pastor cesar kabungkal is watching from CDO, Cagayan de Oro City. Amen. And praise God for that. And uh, we'll be seeing him with uh, ano po, yung mga... Uh, uh, marami pala. I'm, I'm, we're expecting one, tapos two, three, four, five, mga six brethren or more pa sa Mindanao. Amen. And praise God for that. Man, and uh, Sister Merlin parting also sabi niya, good morning. Good morning po, Sister Merlin. Watching from Baguio City. Good morning po sa inyong pamilya. Amen. Si Brother Eliseo, our brother also. Brother Eliseo, nako, hindi ko alam kung natawagan ka ni Brother JR, Brother Eliseo. I hope to see you ngayong 6 or dito. Papunta dito ng, uh, papunta dito sa atin, sa Lipa. Uh, sa AVPI Blitz, I know you're aware of that. Si Brother JR ang in-charge natin sa mga magtawag. No? So, hope to see you, brother. Man, we miss your fellowship. You could bring your family uh, dito po for that time. Okay? And sabi ni Brother Eliseo, good morning, Evangelist Roger at sa lahat ng kapatid. 
sa Panginoon. So Brother Eliseo is watching from um, Alaminos, Pangasinan. Amen, amen. Brother Nolison Kaligan also kasama natin today. Sabi niya, amen, praise God. Isang mapagpalang umaga po muli sa ating lahat at muling uh, sa muling pagkakataon na makapagpakinig ng kanyang mga mayayamang salita. Preach on sir and praying for you and to all and glory to God. Amen, amen. Magandang umaga. And also si uh, Sister Evelyn Parr also watching once again from Batasan Hills, Quezon City. Magandang umaga po sa inyo, Sister Evelyn. Ganon din po sa inyong pamilya. Magandang umaga din sa the whole Parr family. And there are blessings sa ating broadcast po mga kapatid. And, and see you also dito sa, sa, sa ano, uh, nabalitaan ko from Evangelist Bobby that you'll be coming with us dito and help us also dito sa ating uh, sa mga gawain dito. Salamat. And sabi niya, Amen. Good morning po muli, Sir Rog, at sa, ka, at sa lahat po ng brethren. Na umaga po, na umaga sa inyo. Si Pastor Cesar, sabi niya ulit, sabi niya, I'm always repeating and following, learning with your teaching. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, good to know that, Pastor. Pastor um, Cesar. Amen. And uh, na, by the way, ngayon, Uh, let's uh, let's learn together no ngayon lalo na nasa teachings of Jesus Christ pa tayo nasa Bordo sinulat ko na yung na, na, na discuss po natin nung mga nakaraan tapos dito tayo sa number nine yung teachings of Christ concerning sa preparation for the tribulation amen so and we'll be dealing on that today okay sabi ni sister Jacqueline Colardo also sabi niya uh, watching also from Batasan Hills Sabi niya, good morning po Evangelist Roji at sa lahat po. Good morning Sister Jack. Amen. Good morning Teacher Jack. Amen. Brother Randy Rigor. Good to have Brother Randy Rigor once again this morning. And sabi niya, blessed morning po ulit sa lahat. Magandang umaga po Brother Randy. And good to have you with us this morning. Amen. Uh, also Sister Sarah Coralde. Good morning Sister Sarah. Magandang umaga po sa inyong pamilya. And uh, sa inyong lahat dyan, sabi niya, good morning po sa Rog at sa lahat. Sister Sarah is watching from San Mateo Rizal. Amen, amen. And also, sino pa nandito kasama natin? Si Sister Judian Kuya. Amen. San Jose del Monte. Inunahan ko na aking isip kasi nasanay ako sa Batasan Hills. Nasa San Jose del Monte, Bulacan po. Sila Sister Judian Kuya. Sabi niya, good morning po. Evangelist Roji at sa lahat po. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. And uh, Sister Cherry Root, also kasama din natin this morning. Once again, sabi niya, blessed morning po ulit, Sir Roj, at sa lahat po. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Amen, amen, amen. Sabi nga ng isang kaibigan natin, sabi niya, grace morning, grace morning. <laughs> good morning din sa inyo. And uh, sa inyong lahat. Amen, amen. And... Uh, Okay, and uh, so excited po sa ating mga pag-usapan today. So let's take advantage sa ating time po mga kapatid. And let's ask our host to play one good music this morning. Then after that, we'll go on ahead sa ating lesson dito po sa ating Workman's Treasure. Rightly Dividing 101, under po ng God's plan through the ages. At nandito po tayo ngayon sa earthly ministry ni Christ. At dito po tayo sa teachings of Jesus Christ. Ngayon, as, okay, so pag-usapan po natin yan today. So, and uh, let's ask Mr. Host to uh, please, uh, okay. What's the big deal? Why all the excitement? Folks say to me wherever I go. Why get so loud? Why all the emotion? There is no cause to make such a show. If they only knew the change in me when I found a hope that set me free. I can't help but shout, for I know without a doubt I have a hope. I have a hope. I have a hope. It's not just emotion. I have a hope. I have a hope that anchors my soul. It's more than a dream. More than a dream. It's more than 
This hope that I have has lived through the ages. He's never changed, he's always the same. When I read his word, he just walks through the pages. Something goes through me when I hear his name. His name is Counselor and Friend. And he is the one on whom I depend. His word is my sword, yes, Jesus is Lord. He is my hope. I have a hope. I have a hope. It's not just emotion. I have a hope. I have a hope that anchors my soul. It's more than a dream. It's more than a dream. It's more than a notion. built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand Amen. Thank God for that song. Amen. Our hope is not just an emotion. Amen, amen, amen. And let, let's acknowledge the presence of Brother Prince Braille. Amen. Talde. And uh, of course, we know them. Pumaka, but that is watching from uh, ano po, sa, um, Santiago City. Amen. And isa sa mga young men po doon na lumalaki na dati, una nating makita nilang liliit, no? At sa yearly nilang pagpunta dito sa ministry, sa people first name dito sa, lalo na sa ADPI, ayun, makikita mo kanilang growth. And they're young men now, amen, praise God. Sabi nila, good morning po Evangelist Rogis. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to hear God's word. Di talaga kayang mapigilan ng COVID ang pag-share ng God's Word. Glory to God po. That's right, young men. Amen. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Welcome everyone. And uh, dito po tayo. Tayo po ay manalangin at uh, magpatuloy po tayo sa ating gawain dito po sa Workman's Treasure Study Series. And again, ang, se- ang lesson po natin every Tuesday ay write about rightly dividing, subject on rightly dividing 101 and we are still dealing on this for how many months if not a year uh yung ano po yung itong God's plan through the ages and uh ay uh, dinya dahan-dahan natin chunk by chunk yung ating ano and nandito po tayo ngayon nandito po tayo ngayon sa earthly ministry of Christ the earthly ministry of Christ and dito pa tayo ngayon so ang tagal natin no ilang ano na po tayo na pag-usapan natin yung Old Testament back doon at nandi at least nandito na tayo so Sunod niyan will be uh, dito po tayo, aabot po tayo sa dispensation of the grace of God and dito, then sunod. So dahan-dahan lang para maintindihan natin ng tuluyan po ang yung, over, uh, yung kabuuan ng Biblia. Amen? Once na makita mo yung kabuuan ng Biblia ay napaka dali na lang po mga kapatid pag magbasa ka ng Bible, makita mo, i-plot mo na kaagad. Amen? So let's pray and ask God for wisdom and help today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, lumalapit, Lord, na mihingi ng inyong uh, tulong sa amin. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil uh, may access kami sa inyong gawain, sa inyong salita ngayong araw na ito. Sana, Lord, ikaw patuloy ang mag, 
uh, illumine sa amin, sa mga salita ninyo. Lord, we acknowledge our limitations and capabilities when it comes to understanding sa salita. So, Lord, help us. Let your uh, word be made clear in our eyes and in our hearts and in our mind, Panginoon, na amin ding ma-apply at um, appreciate namin at mag-rejoice kami, Lord, sa lahat ng matutunan namin today. And may it be, Lord, sa lahat, whatever mang ma- makuha namin, ang Panginoong Jesus will receive all the glory, the praises, and the adoration and the preeminence. And this we ask in His mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. So, magandang umaga po muli sa atin. So, uh, this morning, at uh, sige po, uh, let me give you yung, yung ano po, yung, yung na-discuss natin so far dito sa earthly ministry ni Christ kasi tapos na tapos natin si John the Baptist eh, kay bababa po ako po mga kapatid na para na yan so natapos natin yung discussion with regards doon kay John the Baptist anong purpose ni John the Baptist ang kanyang calling ang kanyang ministry we talk also about yung baptism uh, na kaakibat kay John the Baptist yung water baptism so We built about that already. Now, dito na po tayo kay Jesus Christ. Okay? So next, next one na atin po i-discuss is ang Panginoong Jesus, another prophet, ay an ena, messenger na pakita po natin mismo ang Panginoong Jesus. Amen. So, and dito sa kanyang earthly ministry, ay mayroon siya mga teachings na the built na natin to, no? Itong walo na ito, First, tinuro niya na siya ay minister to circumcision. Na sino ang circumcision? They are the, sino sila? They are the Jews or Israel. Okay? They are the Jews or the nation of Israel. So, now, pumunta siya dito hindi para mag-minister sa mga Gentiles. Dapat maintindihan po natin at malinaw po sa atin. I don't have to go over dito. Na-deal to po natin yan. All you have to do is to review sa ating mga previous lessons po mga kawadet. Next is teaching Israel. So, ibig sabihin, ang recipient ng kanyang mga teachings ay the circumcision or Israel. So, nakita po natin that he's teaching Israel that he is the son of God and the king of Israel promised. He was the promised son of God and the king of Israel. So, tinuturo po niya doon. Hindi po siya king of the world. He was not yet teaching, but he was still the king of Israel. And also, The Lord Jesus Christ taught the Jews that salvation is through His name. Salvation is through His name. He was not teaching that salvation is through death, burial, and resurrection. Not yet. Not yet. He was not teaching that those lessons, okay, those truths, during His earthly ministry. Dapat maintindihan natin ng malinaw yun. Huwag tayo makonfuse. Ang teaching ng death, burial, and resurrection as the means of the power of God to save anybody, which is the gospel po mga kapatid, is sa panahon po natin, sa panahon ng dispensation of the grace of God. Pero sa panahon po nila po mga kapatid, Jesus Christ was not yet teaching ng mga bagay po na yan, Okay? So it was still a mystery. It was still unrevealed truth po mga kapatid. Okay? Huwag nating isipin na ang ibanghelyo dito ay kagaya din ng ibanghelyo dito. That's really an, a careless mistake ng isang Bible student to do that po, mga kapatid. Amen. I think you have to read the Bible enough and you have to believe the Bible enough po, mga kapatid, to see the difference. See the difference. Yun po yung atin po. So, of course, na-discuss po natin yan. And he was also teaching obedience to the law. While he was on earth, he was teaching obedience to the law. So, bakit obedience to the law? Because they were still under the law. So, they were still under the law. So, yun po yung mga, ano po na yun po mga kapatid. Kaya he was teaching obedience to the law. Bakit under the law? Akala ko ba New Testament na? Nung, pumas, uh, nung pinanganak si Kristo? No, it was not yet the New Testament. The New Testament cannot be enforced not until the death of the testator. And the testator of the New Testament is Jesus Christ. So technically, kung hindi pa na-install yung bagong testament, they were still under the first testament, which is the blood of bulls and of goats. And they're still under the old covenant, which is the Mosaic law. 
So un- not until the Lord Jesus Christ will die, they are still under the law. So yun po ang point natin. That's why he was teaching obedience to the law. He was not teaching by any means to contradict or to to ano to anong tawag nito to violate the Mosaic law, but rather sabi niya he come not to destroy the law but to fulfill it. And the final fulfillment of the law is that when he died on the cross of Calvary, that was the fulfillment of all the ceremonial laws, of all the ordinances that was pointing ang kanyang death, burial, and resurrection. But before that would happen, they're still under the law. Amen. They're still under the law. So nakita po natin. So that's why he was teaching obedience to the law. Kaya may mga keeping pa of the law. Po. May ma- mayroon pang mga Levitical priesthood. Mayroon pang yung mga ordinances na kailangan nilang gawin. So because they're still under the law. And the next teaching is the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching and enforcing the Abrahamic covenant. So ano ba ang teaching ng Abrahamic covenant that the means of blessing sa mga tao, especially sa ibang mga tao kung hindi, hindi sila anak ni Abraham, is to go through Abraham. So the blessing is that uh, the, 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 the nation of Israel is they are the children of bless, the blessing through Abraham because they are un, the ch- child of Abraham. And if the Gentiles also will be blessed, they are not any, anybody that is not born of Abraham or part of the children of Abraham, I, they have to go through Abraham. They could not go directly to God. Amen. When God would deal the world, he will go through through Abraham. Okay, through the nation of Israel. So that is to say, sabi ng Abrahamic covenant na babasa natin many times in so book of Genesis and other passages ng Bible, sabi niyo, and sabi doon, bumangapitin, I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse them that curse thee. So I will bless them that bless thee. So ibig sabihin, For the nation to be blessed, they have to bless Israel. They have to bless the nation of Israel or they have to bless Abraham. Then if they are adversarial, if they they contend with Israel, I will curse them that curse thee. So yun po yung basis. So through the Abrahamic covenant, tinituro. Tinituro natin in that time that Jesus Christ, if you remember, That Jesus Christ po mga kapatid ay mayroon po mga instances sa Bible lalo na sa Matthew, Mark, Luke, John na makikita natin that he was he was uh, speaking to few people, to few Gentiles and uh, very prominent po sa mga Gentiles na nakausap ng Panginoon ay yung number one, yung, yung if you remember that uh, Roman centurion in Luke chapter number seven na Roman centurion lumapit sa Panginoong Hesus at sabi niya hindi siya worthy na lumapit sa Panginoong Hesus pero nung sinabi ng mga disciples na tulungan mo itong centurion na ito Lord meron siyang servant na nagkasakit kailangan ng healing and uh, pinapapunta niya kami dito kasi sabi niya hindi siya worthy pero sabi na sabi ng mga disciples he is worthy Lord of the blessing na ibibigay mo sa kanya Because he he loved our nation and he built a synagogue. So what is that? That is a form of blessing. Okay, the nation of Israel. Yun, yun. No? So may kita po natin in that regard. So binuksan ng ating, ng ating host kanina yung verse. No? So he loved our nation. And ano po mga kapatid? He built us kingdom. And also po mga kapatid, uh, synagogue pala. And sabi doon, Of course, tinulungan siya, naka-experience siya ng signs, wonders, and miracles from the Savior. Supposedly, ito mga miracles para lang to sa Hudyo. Dahil sa Abrahamic Covenant, binding po yun, na isang Gentile tumulong sa Israel, kaya tinulungan siya ng Messiah. Nakuha po natin. Yung isa doon is yung very famous, yung Syrophoenician woman na meron sa Matthew 15, na meron siyang sakit. Ay, meron siyang sakit. Ang kanyang daughter ay ay meron pong problema problema ay may mga may demon possessed or devil possessed po mga kapatid yung kanya pong daughter at humingi po siya ng tulong at healing sa Panginoong Hesus at first ay nung tumawag po siya ay uh, hindi po siya sinagot ng Panginoong Hesus he answered not a word and the next time 
she pleaded once again pero sinabi niya diretsahan sa isang babae sabi niya that I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel so parang sinabi niya na hindi ako pinadala sa iyo pinadala ako to the lost sheep of the house of Israel so tapos nagsusumamo patuloy ang isang babae at until such time na sinabihan siya ng Panginoon na the things for the children are not meant for dogs. So, itong mga bagay na ibibigay ko sa children hindi para sa dogs. So, that is even a greater condemnation or discrimination na sinabi doon po mga kapatid that you, itong mga meron ako, itong miracles na meron ako para to sa mga anak which is ang bansang Israel, hindi to para sa dogs. So, hindi pwedeng magreklamo if the if the if this woman is the believer of the Abrahamic covenant we know that he, she's a believer of the Abrahamic covenant because the fact that she called the Lord Jesus Christ as the son of David so alam niya that's why she never complained she never was angry doon po sa sinabi ng Panginoong Hesus although medyo masakit po yun tawagin kang dog but her response was Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. So, pero sabi niya, even dogs, amen, even dogs can eat, amen, the crumbs that will fall on their master's table. So, clear po mga kapatid that she never denied being a Gentile, but she accepted and said, truth, Lord. So, ibig sabihin, she acknowledged her place that Israel is above them. Amen. They are the priority. They are the priority of God. Israel is above them. So with that, because of that po mga kapatid, ay pinagaling ang kanyang daughter ng Panginoong Jesus. Naggrant ang kanyang request. What is that? Because of the Abrahamic covenant. Next. The second one po mga kapatid, Jesus Christ teaching also, He taught about the gospel of the kingdom. We talk about also about that gospel of the kingdom. We, we, we dealt on that, that uh, ang gospel of the kingdom never contemplated the cross. Okay? The gospel of the kingdom never contemplated the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, which is our gospel now. So we differentiate between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. In that regard, itong gospel of the kingdom, we identified po mga kapatid, ano yung Ano yung mga tatlong bagay? We identify the content. Ano yung content ng gospel of the kingdom? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The content of the gospel of the kingdom was never the death, burial, and resurrection. It was not there. But the content is about the expectation of the kingdom to be established. The kingdom that the Lord promised to Israel. Amen. Promised to David. Promised to Abraham. Promised to the prophets that he's going to establish. That is an earthly, political, Davidic, visible kingdom on earth. Okay? To be established by God and Jesus Christ will be the king on that po mga kapatid. On that kingdom that is going to be established. So we, we identify the content. Next, we identify the audience. So the audience of the gospel of the kingdom is none other than the Jews, the nation of Israel, or the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'd like you to take note on that. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the audience. It was never meant for you and me. Okay? It was never meant for the, ano po mga kapatid, for the, for the uh, Gentiles. Amen. And the outcome is, look at the content, the audience, then the outcome. What is the outcome of the gospel of the kingdom? And obviously po mga kapatid is the outcome once the gospel of the kingdom would, would be established po mga kapatid, the first outcome is the end will come. So the end. So that's the end of ano po mga kapatid, that's the end of, of the old age and that would be to welcome to the new, okay, and that is to welcome the world to come which is the millennial kingdom. So it is not just the end of the tribulation but the end of all of those promises po mga kapatid ng lahat and finally the establishment of the world to come so hindi yung end of the world na sinasabi nila na magunaw ang mundo but it's the end of age end of of ano po specific dispensation and obviously 
ang pinakadulo ng specific na dispensation is the tribulation period. Then it would be the bringing in of the new or the world to come, which is the kingdom. Okay? And, and ano pang end, mga kapatid? Uh, it is ano po, the establishment of the kingdom. Ano po ang result? The outcome is the establishment of the kingdom. And ano pang end dito result ng, or ano pa ang outcome ng gospel of the kingdom? It shall be preached to all the world. Then the end come. So ang gospel of the kingdom ba today na preached na to all the world? Wala pa kasi hindi pa na-fulfill yun, mapu-fulfill sa tribulation period. Okay? Sa tribulation, yun yung ma-preach to all the world. Amen. Okay? So, yun, dapat maintindihan po natin at ang kaakibat po ng, ng gospel of the kingdom is the signs, wonders, and the miracles. Okay? Kaakibat po yan. At saka baptism, kasama din po yan sa gospel of the kingdom. Anong baptism? Baptism ni John. Okay? At tinutukoy po natin. Kaya yung mga pastors, mga churches ngayon, na they insist that baptism of John the Baptist is for the church today, have studied their Bible carelessly or have uphold a tradition that is not in the Bible po mga kapatid. I'm sorry to say that, but uh, that is obviously twisting and forcing the scripture. Amen. Na hindi pwede po, ma hindi maaari. And that should not be the way ng pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Amen. Amen. So, I hope na kita po natin, he was also teaching the signs for the kingdom. So, so ano yung mga signs na pinag-usapan din natin? Nagiging Pentecostal tayo nung nakaraan. We were dealing about the signs for the kingdom. What are those? Po mga kapatid, ito yung mga signs, wonders, and miracles. Ito yung mga healing, mga casting of devils. And lahat ng iyon, that accompanies kasi sign for the kingdom po yun. So as long as merong signs po mga kapatid, wonders and miracles, that is anticipating the kingdom. So kaya po sa panahon po natin, listen, sa panahon po natin, wala dito, sa panahon natin, wala tayong mga signs, wonders and miracles na ngayon. Nagsis po ito temporarily. Pero when God was still reaching dito sa earthly ministry ni Kristo, before the cross, sa earthly ministry ni Christ, before the cross, ang signs, wonders, and miracles was there. Bakit? Bakit nandyan? Because they were anticipating that this kingdom would be established. Okay? Kaya nga sabi dun, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They were anticipating. Now, ang tanong is, bakit wala ng signs of the kingdom dito po? Uh, sir, bakit wala ng signs of the kingdom sa, sa panahon po natin? Because our time and age was, is not anticipating the kingdom. We're anticipating the rapture. We're not looking for the kingdom, but we're looking for the rapture. That's why no need. Now, pagdating sa tribulation period, nung ma-rapture out na po ang church, mawala na po ang panahon natin, matapos na ang panahon natin, it would end at sa rapture. Pagdating sa tribulation period, ibabalik po yung mga signs, wonders, and miracles. Bakit ibabalik ang signs, wonders, and miracles? Because this period is now also anticipating for the kingdom. Okay, they're anticipating for the kingdom. So all of these things are signs for the kingdom. Why it's signs for the kingdom? Bakit? Kasi it is a sign that sa kingdom, wala nang sakit, wala nang merong mga, mga imposibling mga miracle at mga supernatural na mga things na mangyayari po doon. Walang jablo, walang 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 any form of ano po mga kapatid. So, uh, kaya ito po ay naglo-look forward. So, ito pong dispensation natin was not looking for the kingdom but looking for the, the, the rapture. Itong part nila sa earthly ministry of Christ, they were looking for the kingdom. And the people really thought that the kingdom would be established in their time. Okay, but they, God has a hidden purpose Amen. And that is the dispensation of the grace of God na kanyang ni-reveal through the Apostle Paul. Kaya ang kingdom po, because of the rejection also, the kingdom was postponed. And uh, the insertion of the dispensation of the grace of God is here with us ngayon. Ito yung panahon natin. Pero one of these days, it would be taken out at babalik sila sa tribulation, pupunta sila sa tribulation period. At sa tribulation period, ay they will be looking again for that kingdom, anticipating again for that kingdom, for that second coming in the kingdom, that's why babalik ulit si signs, wonders, and miracles. So, tapos na tayo niyan, the signs for the kingdom, 
And these signs are for the nation of Israel. And number two, ay number eight, the nature of the kingdom. We dealt on the nature of the kingdom, kung sino ang papasok, anong meron sa kingdom, anong i-expect nila sa kingdom. That was the last time na pinag-usapan po natin po mga kapatid. So ano yung mga preparations nila for that kingdom na dapat nating ma-deal? So I'm, I spend the half, ng, almost ano po, mga 30 minutes or, or 15 minutes sa ating time para sa review lang doon because it's necessary. Kasi minsan hindi po tayo nakasabay na ang layo na natin. That's why I have to do that po mga kapatid. Now, ito pong, ito pong nature and, and expectations sa kingdom oftentimes are recorded in the parables of Christ. Okay, they're recorded in the parables of Christ po mga kapatid. And there are at least seven parables na makikita po natin. And let's let's look at, start with the parable, okay, to seek and to save that which was lost. And yun po yung makikita po natin sa teachings ng kingdom. And by the way, ang parables ay para po ito sa kingdom, okay? Hindi to, walang parables para sa church. Maraming mga dispensationalists today that they try to interpret the parables na para dito. No, these parables is looking always for the kingdom. Anong what to expect for the kingdom and they are describing for the ano po, they are describing the nature of the kingdom. That's why if you read Ma- Matthew chapter number 11, Ma- Matthew chapter 13, mababasa mo the parables of the kingdom of heaven is likened unto The parables of the kingdom of heaven is likened unto. So lahat na yun, sinasabi po ng Panginoon para po doon. Okay, let's look at Matthew 8 verse number 11. Let's start there po mga kapatid. Amen. Sabi, sabi niya dito, And I say unto you that many from come from the east. Okay, 18, 18 bro, not 8, 1811, I'm sorry. The Bible says, For the Son of Man is come and to seek that which was lost. So, ano, ano yung parable po na yan? Ano yung context na makikita po natin yun? Yun yung may parable of the, ano po mga kapatid, coin na makikita po natin na may hinahanap. Okay? Or even yung, yung sheep na maiwan. No, lahat po, ang dami. At ito yung application nito. Okay? So may na sheep na magan astray babalikan po niya at lahat so that's the start of the parable. So ano ang iniintend dito? Ano ang tinuturo dito? Jesus Christ come to seek and to save that which was lost po mga kabatid. How think ye verse 12 if a man had a hundred sheep? Okay, makikita po natin no. So tapos lahat ay nawala yung isa. Tapos iwanan muna niya temporarily yung 90 and 9 and go it into the mountains and seek that which was gone astray. And if so be that he findeth it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the 90 and 9 and which went astray. Look at that. Even so, it is not the will of the Father, look at, which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So ano pong pinaturo dito that bago po sila papasok sa kingdom, Jesus Christ was teaching dito sa earthly ministry niya na bago sila papasok sa kingdom, He will first seek and to save that which was lost. So of course, verse number 11, we apply that practically that what I am one of those lost. Pero ang application po ng verse na ito is to seek and to save which was lost. Sino tong lost na ito na hahanapin bago ma-establish ang kingdom? They are the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. So they are the lost sheep. So ibig sabihin, bago sila papasok muna sa kingdom, meron munang regathering of Israel. May tatawagin muna lahat ng kanyang mga no, then the kingdom would be established. Okay? For example, that's why yung gospel of the kingdom ay para po sa kanila po, mga kapatid. For the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Kaya nga sabi doon sa Matthew chapter number uh, tw- uh, uh, Matthew 15. Look at Matthew 15. This was the teaching of Jesus Christ nung sinabi niya sa, yung sinabi natin kanina doon sa woman po, mga kapatid. Look at verse number 23, Matthew 15 and verse number 23. May kita po natin. Ah, hindi na po sa verse 23. Let's just... 
go directly dito po sa ano po mga kapatid. Sa verse 24, let's jump to verse 24. At sabi niya, sabi niya dito sa verse 24, But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Sino tong lost sheep of the house of Israel? I will explain a little bit as we go on. Let's look at Matthew chapter number 10. So sino tong sinagot lang natin, sino tong to seek and to save that which was lost? Okay? These are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew chapter 10 I'd like you to take note on verse number 7. Let's start with uh no, verse 5. Let's start with verse 5. The Bible says, uh, but these 12 sent forth ito yung purpose ng ministries ng 12 apostles commanded them saying go not into the way of the gentiles and in any into any city of the samaritans enter ye not but the next one is but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel so they are not to go to other places except to the lost sheep of the house of uh, except the lost sheep of the house of israel when they go around the world they are to seek the lost sheep of the house of israel When they go wherever country they go, they are to preach none but to the Jews only. These are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, ito pa ang sinasabi niya sa John chapter number 10. I'd like you to take note on John chapter number 10. Let me see para malocate po natin yung verse. This was the prayer of Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, I am the uh, uh, good shepherd. Sabi niya sa verse 11, and I... For the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Look at that in chapter 10, verse 11 of John. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now look at verse number 12. Anong sabi? But he that is an hireling, not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, Seat the wolf coming and leave it the sheep and flee the wolf catch it them and scatter the sheep. But look at verse thirteen. Ano sabi niya? The hireling fleet because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Sabi niya verse fourteen. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. And verse number fifteen, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So sino tong specific sheep na tinutukoy po dito? Ito yung nation of Israel. The body of Christ was never called a sheep, although practically we could apply it. Pero doctrinally, we are not a sheep. We are a one new man. Amen. We are the new creature, a one new man. But, but the, the sheep of God, there will always been the nation of Israel. But look at verse 16. And other sheep, and other sheep which are not of this fold, Them also I must bring. The other sheep which are not in this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So that is also the application na magikita po natin doon sa parable, amen, uh, to seek and to save that which was lost. That was the lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Bakit? Ano nangyari? During the remember, nung pinag-aralan natin sa Old Testament, during sa time ng captivity, nakaptive po ang Northern Kingdom by the Assyrian Empire and nakaptive yung Southern Kingdom which is Judah and and Benjamin, nakaptive po ng Babylonian Empire. Then later on, pagdating po sa return, ang nakabalik po mga kapatid, ang nakabalik po sa from captivity was only those who were captive by the Babylonian, then later on by the Persian, pagdating ng Persian Empire, ay pinauwi po ang ilang mga Hudyo, yung southern part na southern kingdom, sa kanilang bansa. Pero ang northern kingdom was considered from that time, they were lost, they were never recovered, they are in diaspora, they are in, scattered all over the world. And from that time, pagpasok sa gospel, ang tawag sa kanila are now the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, according to the feast ng Israel, there is what we call the feast of the trumpet. And the feast of the trumpet is that is the regathering of Israel that 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 would happen po mga kapatid, that bago papasok yung feast of the tabernacle, there must be the feast of the trumpet. Then tatlo po yung very, very important, the feast of the trumpet, the Feast of the Day of Atonement, then the Feast of the 
the tabernacle. The feast of the trumpet was the regathering of Israel. And the feast of the day of atonement, that was the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is their national salvation. And the feast of the tabernacle, it, that is the establishment of the kingdom. So these are feasts that are looking okay, forward for the things to come, for the nation of Israel, prophetic things to come. So bago po unang gagawin ay igagather sila. Bago ma-establish yung kingdom, may gathering, may salvation as a nation. So, bago po yun po mga kapatid. So, ang nangyayari, ang nakabalik na tribo, northern, uh, southern tribe. Dalawa lang. Kaya pagpasok ng Panginoong Jesus, ang naabutan po niya na nag-exist na bansang Israel was not yet the whole nation, was not yet the 12 tribes, but the 10 tribes were considered as the lost sheep. They're not the lost tribe, ha? Lost sheep. There's no such thing as the lost tribe of Israel. No. They're lost sheep. Okay? Now, wala sila. They're gone astray. Okay? And they're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And yun yung purpose ng hari. Pago may establish yung kingdom, they have to gather them into one fold. Maibalik ulit. Hanapin ulit. Seek and to save that which was lost. Until nagkompleto na, then and then, ma-establish yung kingdom. Pero hindi nangyari yun dito sa earthly ministry ni Christ. Kaya nung ang ginawa nila, yung two tribes pa nga, nireject na sila. Lalo pa pag ang lahat na. So sa two tribes pa lang, nireject nila, pinako nila ang kanilang Panginoon. Pinako nila ang kanilang Messiah. So that's why, even after po ng, even after ng crucifixion ni Kristo, Nung siya po ay bago siya mag-ascend, nagbigay pa rin siya ng commission sa bansang eh, sa, sa sa mga disciples, sa 12 disciples, 11 na lang kasi Judas yung isa, no? 11 na lang. Tapos i-reach out ang mga Hudyo ulit, hanapin lahat ng mga nandun sa mga kasuluk-sulukan ng mundo. Amen. Sabihin sa kanila that God would establish his Kingdom that He promised to our father David and to the prophets. Amen. Sa ating mga ninuno, sa mga ating fathers, sabi nila. So yun po ang kanilang ano po mga kapatid. Pero nangyari ba sa Acts period yun? Hindi din. Bakit they keep rejecting and rejecting doon po sa mga apostles na nagpipreach po mga kapatid? Totoo yun sir? Nung sinabi ng, nung sinabi ng Panginoon na go ye into all the world, and teach all nations, baptizing them. So, di, anong, anong meron doon? Sinong pupuntahan nila? Ano sabi? Sabi doon sa uh, Great Commission nila sa, sa Mark 15, Mark 16, 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Ano bang gospel ang tinutukoy na ipipreach para sa lahat ng tao na yun? Pero kung okay, slow motion mo yun, Bago ma-preach sa lahat, dapat ma-preach muna sa mga Hudyo una. Kaya yung, yung ano po, ang concept is, And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So there is the primacy. There is a priority. The Jews must be reached out. Then and then the world will be reached out. But did it happen? The Jews himself na unang i-reach out, sila yung nagre-reject. Now, ibig bang sabihin, that's why that explains wala kang makikita sa Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4, Acts 5, Acts 6, Acts 7, Acts 8, Acts 9 in the early Acts na may mga Gentiles na nako-convert, na mga may Gentiles nagiging recipient sa kanilang minsahe. Merong unang Gentile sa Acts 10, si Cornelius, but it was not even the purpose of Peter if it not had been of that revelation na pinakita sa Panginoon, he will not go to, to Cornelius. Dahil alam niya ang kanyang ministry na they are unlawful for them na hindi hudyo na kanilang papangaralan. Let, let's look at Acts chapter number 10. Ito yung explanation niya kay Cornelius po mga kabatid. In Acts chapter number 10, I'd like you to look at in verse number ano po mga kabatid. Dito tayo sa verse 28, Mr. Host. Explanation niya ito sa household ni Cornelius. At sabi niya, and he said unto them, Ye know that it is an unlawful thing 
for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another nation, but God had showed me. If it not had been this encounter of this revelation, he will never go to Cornelius. So look at that. But God had showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Kasi ang tingin nila sa atin, sa mga hintil, sa mga hudyo, unclean. And we are not the recipient of the message of God. We're not part. So, ibig mo bang sabihin, sir, ang understanding nila sa 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 Matthew 28 and Mark 16, nung binigyan sila ng Great Commission para sa Hudyo lang. Of course, listen to Peter. Wala po silang mind na uunahin yung mga, mga hintil. Ang their mind is to seek and to save that which was lost. Yung lost sheep of the house of Israel. Kasi ang mind nila, ma-establish mo na ang kingdom. Then ma-reach yung old world po mga kapatid. Through that kingdom po mga kapatid. Yun ang mindset nila. Because Peter was still ignorant that there is an ongoing, amen, there was the mystery hidden, there was another purpose of God that which was kept secret since the world began. It is the mystery, but it was only revealed to Paul and through Paul they could learn these things po mga kapatid. So he was still ignorant about that. That's why, oh, tayo lang ang, ang ibanghelyo, ang ganito, para to sa circumcision. Hindi pa niya nalaman na may i-reveal ang Panginoon. So kaya sinabi niya, alam niyo ba, Cornelius, na unlawful kaming sumama sa inyo? Hindi kami pwedeng to keep company, mas lalo pa bagbag-preach. Na pumunta sa ibang bansa, and ganito, ganyan. Pero pinakita sa akin ng Panginoon na hindi na ganun yun. Ang tingin namin sa inyo dati, mga filthy, mga uncircumcised, pero pinakita sa Panginoon sa akin na hindi ko pwedeng tawaging common or unclean ang sino mang tao ngayon. Kaya kung mapansin mo, sabi sa chapter number 11 na nung di ba, na, na persecute si Stephen, na stone si Stephen, at dahil po doon nagkaroon ng threatenings po mga kapatid at nagkalat ang mga, nagkalat ang mga disciples, nagpunta sila sa iba't ibang bansa na takot sila sa persecution, Started kay Peter, baka mas stone din sila. So napilitan silang lumabas sa ibang bansa. So nag-stay lang sila sa Jerusalem, Judea, then Samaria. Hanggang dun lang sila. Pero hindi nila napuntahan yung uttermost part of the earth. Because of the persecution, umabot sila sa uttermost part of the earth. Dahil of that persecution, brethren. So then, nung pumunta sila sa uttermost part of the earth, which is outside Samaria, Then that is now the start of the uttermost part of the earth. Anong ginawa nila? Let's look at chapter number 11. Look at verse 19 on that passage po mga kapatid. Ang sabi sa verse number 19, look at this verse 19 and look at this closely and this very important. The Bible says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. So dahil po doon, as what I have told you, upon that persecution which arose from Stephen, What's the next word? Amen. Ang sabi dito, they traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch. What is that? That is already far. That is already considered as part of the uttermost part of the earth. Yung Phoenix, yung Cyprus, and Antioch. And look at that very carefully. Preaching the word. Who are they? They are the Jewish disciples. They are the Jewish na mga believers. And they're preaching. They're preaching the word. Kahit sa ibang bansa, kahit sa ang lugar sila. Look at that. Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews. What? What? Unto the Jews. What? Only. Amen. Kasi yun yung mindset nila. Kaya... Pagsabihin mo mga kapatid na ang Matthew 28 at Mark 16 is the great commission for the church. Nako, magkaroon ka ng malaking problema po mga kapatid. Alam kung bakit. Kasi sa commission na yon, amen, hindi tayo direct, indirect tayo. Ibig sabihin, indirect ang Gentiles as recipient, indirect audience. Bakit indirect audience? 
or secondary audience. Bakit? Ang order is this. Makarinig mo na lahat ng mga Hudyo. Okay? Ma-reach out at ma-save mo na ang lahat ng mga Hudyo bago pa tayo. Yun ang order ng kingdom. Kasi ang kingdom na ito, yung gospel of the kingdom, is para to sa kanila. Eh. That therefore, tama lang na sila ang priority. Pero sa gospel natin, sa panahon natin, walang sinisino-sino. Walang priority. And this gospel of the grace of God, the death, burial, and resurrection, this is for all men. This is for every soul. Walang Jew first, walang anuman. This is for every soul po mga kapatid. Dapat maintindihan po natin. Amen. So that's, I hope naintindihan natin yung parable of, of the lost sheep. Or this is, that is to seek and to save that which was lost po mga kapatid. Now let's go to Matthew chapter, the next one. And, and Matthew chapter number uh, 13. Look at this Matthew 13. And there's another thing in Matthew 13. I'd like you to look at verse number 46. Look at verse number 46. Amen. Makikita po natin in Matthew 13 verse 46. So look at an, kung ang context titingnan natin sa verse number 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a merchant seeking goodly pearls. Oh my merchant Seeking goodly pearls. Pero ang sinabi dito sa verse 46, Who, when he had found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, ito yung mistake ng mga ano po mga kapatid. Ito yung mistake ng, ng maraming mga nag-attempt na mag-interpret ng parable Pag mag-interpret ka ng parable at hindi ka mag-rightly divide, i-apply mo to sa church. And I've heard many preachings about this parable that the great price daw dyan ay ang church. Mga kapatid, the church was never contemplated in the context. It was never not even in the mind po ng mga apostles ang understanding na ito ay church po mga kapatid because the church is still unrevealed at this time. The body of Christ is unspoken at this time. It was still secret at this time. And far be it sa mind po natin in the way we interpret the scripture na ito yun ang church po mga kapatid. Obviously, the parable is for the gospel, the kingdom of heaven, verse 40, 45, and the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking for goodly pearls. So gospel ay kingdom of heaven na ngay. When you talk about the kingdom of heaven, we're talking about literal, visible, physical, political, earthly, Davidic kingdom to be established on earth. And hindi po yun church, the body of Christ, because the church was never a kingdom. And ba, ano, ano yung problema, yung context and, not fi, uh, and, and also failing to rightly divide? Wood, mga kabadid would introduce a lot of a lot of ano pong tawag nito a lot of problem po mga kapatid that's that's the problem no so ano pong ibig sabihin this is the parable is to sell all kaya makikita mo pagdating kasi sa kingdom po mga kapatid wala ka nang kailangan wala ka nang mga kailangan na earthly goods ang gagawin mo i forsake mo ibenta mo lahat i sell all that you have and and that, that is the kingdom. That's the blessing of the kingdom. Itong great price, itong pearl na ito, the blessing of the kingdom. Now, once na ma maintindihan mo yun, ibibenta mo na lahat. Kaya ito yung doktrina na i-sell all. Sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Remember? Sell all that you have, give it to the poor. Yun ang mindset ng kingdom. Bawal mag-save. Hindi ka pwedeng, hindi pwede. Ang teaching ng kingdom sa parable nito. Hindi pwede kang mag, may bangko, may bank account, ba, ba, bawal mag-save for the future, bawal mag, magtrabaho, mag-ipon ng mga ganito. Kasi ang kingdom malapit na. Sabi dito, hindi mo na kailangan. Kaya i-sell all mo lahat. That's, that's the teaching. Let's look at Matthew chapter 19. Tinan mo, bahala na. Blessed are they that are poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yun yung context. Yun, yun yung 
Yun yung teaching dito sa mga parables. I'm talking to you that the nature of the kingdom po mga kabatid. Panahon po na ito. So yun po, no? Jesus Christ was teaching here and He was pointing. He was teaching in this time and He was pointing here of what is going to expect and what's going to happen. Okay? He was not, he was not pointing here. No. He was pointing here. Okay? So take note on that. Sell all you have. And Matthew 19, did I say Matthew 19? Let's start off with verse number 20. Uh, let's start with verse number um, 27. Kasi ang context dito is yung rich young ruler, tama? With great possession. Sige, let's start. Bago tayo magpunta sa, sa isang rich young ruler, ay bago tayo pupunta doon, may context. Let's, let's look at verse 16. Let's look at verse 16. Ito yung context. And sabi dito sa verse 16 of Matthew 19, Mr. Host, And behold, one came, sabi dito, and said unto him, Good master, what good thing? Yun ang tanong ha. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So anong eternal life nito na tinutuko niya? Eternal life in heaven? No, eternal life in the kingdom. So yun po yung kanyang, yung kanyang, kanyang question. So what good thing? So ano ba ang salvation dito? Ano ba ang basis ng salvation? Hindi lang faith alone, but good thing din na gagawin. Kaya tinanong niya diretso right to the master. Good master, what good thing, amen, shall I do that I may have eternal life? Is that a trick question? No, it was an honest inquiry. Then, well, Jesus Christ also would, would give a trick answer? No, Jesus, that was a straightforward question. And Jesus Christ will give the, him also a straightforward answer. Verse 18. Uh, verse number 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, Anong sabi? But if thou enter into life, enter into that eternal life, enter into that eternal life in the kingdom, but if thou enter into... So this is now the answer to the question. What, what must he do? Keep the commandments. Sabi niyo ba, oh, parihas lang ang salvation sa lahat ng ages? Pambira. I don't know kung, kung how do you read. Kaya nga sabi din ang Panginoon, what readest thou? And how readest thou? These things. Should, should I have understand another thing? Should I say, oh, faith lang yan, oh, faith lang yan, oh. When the Bible says, but if thou wilt enter into life, kasi yung tinanong, eternal life eh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Oh, see, faith. How, how dare me and say and change the word keeping or works into faith or oh, see, grace lang. Oh, oh. How could I? It's madness. It is folly. It is blindness. When I understand otherwise. Should, should this keep the commandments described Grace? Akala ko ba ang grace is not of works? No more of works. It's not. Now, is that a trick answer? No. Is Jesus Christ misleading his ano? Ang ginagawa kasi nitong verse na ito, binabago to ng madaming mga nag-aaral quote-unquote ng Bible because they cannot take the Bible literally. Amen. Wala kang, huwag kang matakot, mag-rightly divide ka na lang. Huwag kang matakot. Bakit? Itong verse na ito, hindi to applicable sa panahon natin. Kasi ang, sa panahon natin, by grace through faith, alone through the shed blood and the finished work of Christ. Wala nang iba. Pero it was not the case before the cross. Are you listening, brethren? It was not the case before the cross. You know, the Bible is hard to understand if you will try to move away from its actual sense. When you try to interpret it, amen, otherwise than its actual sense. No actual sense, keep the commandments. Sabi ng, anong sagot? 
Sinabi pa ng Panginoon, He saith unto him, which? Ta- tanong niya, which commandment? Kasi ang daming commandments. Sabi, <laughs> sabi ng rich young ruler. And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, is that describing grace? Without works? Man, you must have been blind to understand otherwise. Please don't be blind. Open your eyes. If you say you're saved, you have the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, and you heart, this should be plain and simple before you. Amen. And anong sabi sa verse number 20? The answer of the young man is, the young man saith unto him, All this have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Oh. So na, na-keep ko na to lahat. Imagine, na-keep niya lahat na sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus. Sabi niya, ano pang lack ko? So kung hindi siya nagsasabi ng totoo, nakipag-argue sa ng Panginoong Jesus at sabihin niya, Uy, hindi mo na-keep pa. Alam ko puso mo, hindi mo nakip. So ibig sabihin, since hindi ko niyantra ng Panginoong Jesus, nagtanong siya ng further question at sinabi niya, at sinabi niya, what lack I yet? Ano pagkukulang ko? Verse number 21. Sumagot ang Panginoong Jesus, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go, what? And sell that thou hast. Oh, <laughs> Selling. Wala pa. Mayaman kasi ikaw eh. Pero one thing na hindi mo magawa, sell that thou hast and gave it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Yun pala eh. Sell all. Sell that thou hast. Sa Luke chapter number 17, sell all you have and gave it to the poor. And Luke 18 pala, and come, follow me. Amen. So yun ang point na gusto po nating tingnan po mga kapatid. Look at, anong sabi? Ano bang, ano ang lesson na ngayon dito? Sa Matthew 19, ano ng lesson? Yun yung context, ha? Yun yung context, verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possession. So magkaroon ba siya? Imagine, nakip mo yung law pero hindi mo pa kayang mabenta because ang requirement sa kingdom, hindi lang also keeping the law but also selling all that you have because consider the kingdom as the great price. Amen. Consider it as the ano po, mga kapatid, great price that you are to be willing to sell all in exchange of the blessings in the kingdom. That's the point of, of that parable po, mga kapatid. Nakikita natin of that parable of that ano po, mga kapatid, of that uh, pearl of that great price. That the kingdom is that pearl. Now, once the maano po po mga kabatid, that you have to appraise the kingdom more than anything, you are to be willing to sell all that you have. And anong sabi? Ano pang sabi sa verse, sa text na binasa po natin? And sabi niya dito, in verse number 20, um, 19, in verse number 20, ano na tayo? 23. Then said Jesus in, unto his disciples, look at that, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Bakit hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven? Because ang isang balakid ng isang rich man is kung willing ba siya ibenta ang lahat at magiging mahirap in exchange of the kingdom. Hello? Yun na ang katuruan. Yun ba ang katuruan natin ngayon? Hindi ah. Ang katuruan natin ngayon, mag-provide ka sa iyong pamilya. Ang katuruan natin ngayon, mag-prepare ka sa kailan, mag-trabaho ka. Dito ang katuruan sa kingdom, kasi anticipating anytime the kingdom will come, hindi nila kailangan na yun, mga bagay na yun. Kaya ba sabi dun, seek ye first the kingdom of God and in all His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All these shall be added unto you. So yun yung principle. Yun yung application din ng verse po na yun. Amen. Now, we could 
we could get plenty of applications and practical applications. We're not against that. But bago po natin pupunta tayo, let's look at the actual and real sense on that verse. So, ano na sabi? Kaya mahirap ang mga rich man maka-inherit sa kingdom. Kasi ayaw nila eh. Ayaw nilang maging mahirap eh. Requirement yun eh. I-sell mo lahat eh. Ito ang sabi dito. Verse number 24. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of, the, of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Hindi ibig sabihin, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi sila maka-inherit sa kingdom of God. Mahirap sa kanila if they are unwilling to sell all that they have. Nakuha po natin? Ano na intindihan po natin? Next, verse number 24, ay 25. When his disciples heard it, they were exceeding amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? <laughs> Sabi na, tama nga, tama nga din naman ang, ang tanong ng, ng disciples. Eh, sino ngayon ang maligtas? Oh, another question. Sino ngayon ang maligtas? Ibig sabihin, sino ngayon ang makapasok sa kingdom? Kung ganun pala kahirap ang mga mayayaman. Sagot ng Panginoon, ito, makinig kayo sa sagot ng Panginoon. Verse number 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. What with God, all things are possible. Now, verse twenty-seven. Then answered Peter and said unto him, "Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have? Therefore, Lord, we have forsaken all. Therefore, na iwan na na benta, na forsake, na benta. Di ba dati silang mga fishermen? Ano ginawa nila? Iniwan na nila trabaho nila. At anong ginawa nila? At sumunod na kami sa inyo. Therefore, Lord, anong meron kami? Yan ang tanong niya. Verse number 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of His glory, ye shall also sit upon the twelve tribes, at twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Oh, yun pala ang blessing nila ng mga apostles. Kasi iniwan nila lahat, binenta, patrabaho, pati pamilya. Alam niyo ba ang iniwan pati pamilya nila? Doktrina ba natin to ngayon, Mother Mary? Hindi ah. Hindi mo iiwanan ang pamilya for the sake of missionary work. You have to bring them to the missionary work. You have to join them. You have to provide. Hindi itong teaching natin. Sa panang, yun ang teaching para sa kingdom. Kaya kung hindi ka mag-rightly divide, oh, bakit iniwan mo yung asawa? Dahil sabi ng Bible, ito sabi ng Bible oh, Verse twenty nine, and everyone that forsaketh houses, oh, forsaketh houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But the but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Imagine kung yun ang teaching natin ngayon. Iwanan mo asawa mo at punta ka sa ibang lugar. Iwanan mo yung mga malilit mong anak. Sumunod ka sa akin. We're not anticipating for the kingdom. We're anticipating for the rapture. That was true teaching during this time, but it cannot be in this time. Yun ang teaching ng Panginoong Jesus. Oh. Pag ikaw nagmamayabang, oh, eh, sinunod mo ba ang teachings of Christ? Ano ang teachings of Christ? May teachings of Christ ngayon through Paul. Sa panahon natin. Pero are you speaking of the teachings of Christ concerning the kingdom? And I'll tell you rightly, it is not for me. It is not for this dispensation. And dapat maintindihan po natin. So ngayon, ikaw ay worse than an infidel kung iwanan mo ang iyong mga anak. Worse than an infidel ka kung hindi ka magpakain, hindi mo i-provide ang iyong pamilya. So I, we don't want to be charged ng jaan. So careless Bible application and Bible study would lead us to heresies. And be careful. Kung i-apply mo itong truth na ito sa panahon natin, heresies yan sa panahon natin. Because these things are iba-iba eh, ibang lugar yan eh. Kahit, kahit nasa Bible po yun. But mga heresy, remember that? mga heresies, mga false teaching, mga theological teaching na mali, they are also the truth. They are also truth but misplaced. Hindi pwedeng i-misplace mo yung truth. 
and magkakaroon tayo ng problem. Okay? So ito yung I'm talking about this is the the example ng sell all na teaching. Sell all. So because they're looking for the kingdom. Now, balik ay sa Acts. Ano ano nangyari sa Acts period? Ano nangyari sa Acts period po mga kabadet? 'Di ba? Tapos na after the cross, after the cross. Now, sa Acts period before Paul, wala pa silang idea na may church. Wala silang idea na may dispensation of the grace of God ang mga apostles. Wala silang idea na may body of Christ ang mga apostles. Kaya ano ang mindset nila kung anong binigay ng Panginoon sa kanila? Bakit wala silang idea? Because ang si Paul ang tinalaga ng Diyos, siya yung chosen vessel kung saan i-reveal ang mga truths natin ngayon sa dispensation of the grace of God. Kay Paul natin natutunan ng lahat ng ito. So ang alam ng mga apostles, kung ano yung natutunan nila. Kaya nga, pag punta ka sa... Tingnan natin. Sige, dyan. <laughs> ito ha, itong problema. Bago tayo sa Acts muna, punta muna tayo sa Matthew 28. And I, I heard a wonderful preaching yesterday. Of course, mga kapatid, I am looking and listening sa mga ano po, mga kapatid. And I heard a wonderful preaching yesterday from Pastor Chenga. Do you not know that, Mother Mary? I'm I'm listening. Dito, even even in this, in my ano po mga kapatid, we are learning. We are learning from anybody. Now we're listening and I appreciate that. He was teaching on the Great Commission on Matthew 28 that it was not, it was not. Para, it was not our Great Commission. And he was, he, by God's grace, excellently, amen, explaining all of that and i my heart is leaping with joy and praise god that that that, that church there and their pastor mga kapatid is now teaching and presenting the truth and I appreciate that and i thank god for that amen kung marinig niyo lang ang amen ko no amen for that so you're blessed na makatanggap kayo at your church could pinpoint na itong mga and can rightly divide na ito ay hindi naman talaga to commission para sa body of Christ. This was given doon sa mga Hudyo. Amen. And uh, now, I'll, I'd like to reinforce that. Look at Matthew 28. Describe po ito kahapon in verse 19. Ano sabi? Verse 19. Matthew 28 and verse 19. Anong sabi, Mr. Host, in that in that passage that we have? Nasa Acts siya eh. So, yan. yan. Go ye therefore, look at, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So, y- anong, anong commission sa kanila? Pupunta sila sa buong bansa. Sino ang hahanapin ulit sa, pag pupunta sila sa ibang bansa? None but to the Jews. Pag once na mag, ano po sila, mag-respond, i-baptize po sila. Ano tong baptism na ito? Yes, this is part of water baptism and John's baptism. Amen. Water baptism for the remission of sins. That was very important. And teaching them in the name of, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 20. Look at verse 20. Another thing. Ito yung i-jump up niya. Teach them, teaching them to observe all things. Naku po. Ito, ito. Dito tayo ma-stumble. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, I don't know if faithful ba ang mga nagbubukas, nagbubuklat po ng ng mga nagsasabi na ito daw ang great commission nila ituro daw lahat ng tinuro ng Panginoong Jesus whatever I have commanded you. Na, naintindihan nyo ba kung anong inutos ng Panginoon sa apostol? Ang inutos ng Panginoon sa mga apostol eh, huwag kayong pumunta sa hintil. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Isa yun sa mga teaching. Isa yun sa mga teachings po mga kapatid na Matthew, Matthew 10 verse number Matthew 10 verse number 6. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Amen. Into the way of the Samaritan, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Ang tanong ko, sa mga nagkikip ba ng Great Commission sa Matthew 28, 20, nasunod ba yun? Now, pangalawa, ang nagtuturo ba ng mga Great Commission na susunod ba yung Matthew 19 kanina na pinuntahan natin na ibenta mo ang lahat, iwanan mo lahat at sumunod ka kay Kristo na sunod ba yun? Yun ang teaching ng Panginoong Yesus eh. 
You want the teachings of Christ? Read Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. Pag magmura ka, you are in danger of hellfire. Ikikip mo lahat yun. Pag ikaw ay hindi po, hindi po magmahal or hindi ka magiging anak ng Diyos. Ang, ang, ang dami. You want to know the teachings of Christ? Really? Ito, na siya ay, circumcis- siya ay minister to circumcision. Huwag kayong mag-minister sa iba. At ang kanyang salvation is hindi death, burial, resurrection through His name. Pangalan lang. At ikaw ay mag-obey sa law because you, they're still under the law. Ikaw ay ano, isundin mo yung Abrahamic covenant, ibibless mo ang mga Hudyo. At ang gospel of the kingdom ang iyong i-preach, hindi gospel of the grace of God. At ang mag-perform ka ng signs, wonders, and miracles because that's a sign for the kingdom. At i-explain mo sa kanila, ituro mo sa kanila ang nature ng kingdom recorded in Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7, which are the Beatitudes, and take it as it is. Na-describe na natin yan last time po mga kabatid. Napag-usapan na natin yan last time. You imagine? So, anong, anong nangyayari? Po mga kabatid, kahit after the cross, after the cross, tinuro pa rin nila yung anong tinuro ng Panginoon sa kanila. Bakit? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Kaya, anong alam ni Peter? So, anong tinutos ng Panginoon sa kanila? Tinuro niya. So, anong, tinu- anong tinuro niya? You can read dito po sa, sa Acts chapter number 2. Ay kita mo, mababasa mo sa Acts chapter 2. Anong tinuturo ni Peter? Ang dami po mga kapatid. So, tingnan mo. Sige, nag-preach siya. Ano ang preaching niya? Let's start with verse number, ano po? Start na tayo ng verse number 36. Nung pagkatapos niya nag-preach sa so verse 36, anong sabi? Sino ang audience niya? Israel. Bakit Israel, sir? Bakit walang Gentiles? Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi ang utos sa kanila, ang kaman sa kanila, sa Hudyo lang. Yeah, verse 36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Anong message niya sa mga Hudyo? Pinako niyo ang inyong Messiah. Tapos, anong nangyari? Anong nagiging effect sa kanila? Verse 37. No sabe. Now, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, "Men and brethren, what shall we do?" Oh, napakagandang question niyo. Kanina yung rich young ruler, "What good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life?" Acts 16:31. "What must I do to be saved?" Nakoobserbaran niyo mo yung mga sagot. Ito, iba din. What shall we do? Now, si Peter magsinwaling ba? Anong isasagot ni Peter? Eh, kung ano ang nireveal ng Panginoon at inutos ng Panginoon sa kanila. So, ano inutos? Then Peter answered, verse 38, and said unto them, Peter said unto them, Repent! Yun ba yung teaching ni John the Baptist? Di ba yun na sabi nila? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yun yung teaching ng Panginoon. Repent! Ano tong repent? Repentance from sins talaga to. And be baptized. Di ba part ng baptism? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And what is this baptism? John's baptism. For what? Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Di ba part ng commission yun, Brother Joma, Mr. Host? Part ba ang commission, ang baptism? Sa Great Commission? Yes. Look at Mark 16, 15 and 16. Anong sabi? Mark 16, 15 and 16. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16, please. To every creature. Okay. Look at that. To every creature. Verse 16. Anong sabi? And he that believeth and is baptized. See, two things. Believing. And then be baptized. Kaya pala po mga kapatid ang nag-aattempt na mag nag-aattempt na mag ano na magpo-fulfill ng commission na ito. Emphasis nila ba- water baptism, water baptism, water baptism. Yun ang emphasis nila sa ministry. Kasi part nga na nga naman ng Great Commission, pero nag-uumit sila, nagtatanggal sila. 
Bakit sila magpabaptize? Anong sabi kanina sa Acts 2.38? For the remission of sins! Amen. Pero ang ginagawa ng mga tao ay hindi for the remission of sins. Hindi part sa kaligtasan ng baptism. Pero emphasis nila. Pero dito sa Bible, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. Sino ang masisave? He that believe it alone? Or an is baptized also? Should that, that be coupled? Yes, bakit? Yan ang inutos eh. Shall be saved. But he that believe it not shall be damned. Bakit? He that believe it not shall be damned. Kasi pag hindi ka magbibilib, hindi ka din magpababaptize. Automatic yun. Kung ikaw ay magbibilib, automatic ka din magpababaptize. Then together, you will be saved. That was a requirement because kailangan nila ng remission of sins. Why? Oh, tapos na ang crosser eh. May cross na oh, tapos na oh. Dapat yun ang remission of sins. Wala pang revelation na ang cross ay ang remission of sins. <laughs> Wala pa. Wala pang revelation na ang blood ni Kristo para sa remission of sins. Iri-reveal pa lang yun kay Paul. Tindihan po natin. Ang alam lang nila, ang water baptism most for the remission of sins. And dapat maintindihan po natin po yan mga kapatid. Amen. So, wala pa. Let's wait for that. Darating po yun, no? So, yun. Yun ang point. Kaya ang mindset sa Acts 2, nagpapatuloy pa rin ang sell all you have. Nagpapatuloy pa rin ang mga teachings ni Jesus Christ even in early Acts. Even in this parable. Sige, Acts 2 na tayo. And verse number 44, anong ginawa? And all that believe were together and had all things common Yan ang real communism. All things common. And next, what's the next one? Verse number 45. And sold their what? Their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as they were, as every man had need. So, oh, binenta lahat. At anong ginawa? At ikakast nila doon sa apostles' feet. As we go on sa ibang passage po mga kapatid. So anong nangyari? Binenta nila. They sold all their possession. Look at Acts 4. There's another instance on that po mga kapatid. Sa Acts 4, na binenta din nila. Ang lahat po mga kapatid. Okay? And look at verse number 34. Look at verse 34. Acts 4, 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Okay, let's let's start with muna dito sa verse number um verse number 32. And the multitude, kita niyo po. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. So wala silang sinasabing pag-aari. Bakit wala silang pag-aari? Binibenta eh. Kasi ang mindset nila, hindi mo na kailangan ng ari-arian. Kasi ang kingdom, nandito na. Darating na. Yan ang mindset nila. Mindset ah I'm not necessarily saying na yun, na yun pa rin ang dispensation. Mindset yun. Pero may ongoing dispensation na, may great shift na nangyayari because of the accomplishment of the cross, but they never knew about it. Later on, they will be informed by the Apostle Paul that there is already a great shift, a great change na nangyayari po mga kapatid. Okay? But they never knew about this though. So, they continue only on the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ano yung teaching? Na pag the pearl of the great price, you have to sell all in exchange of that. So, ito sa kanila, wala silang they ought, ah, sabi niya, Neither said any of them that ought of the things, okay, he owned, uh, he possessed, was his own, but they had all things in common. In verse 34, jump to verse 34, no sabi. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Wala ding kulang. Wala silang pag-aari. Nakita niyo po ano? Wala ding silang kulang. And look at, for as many as were possessor of lands, or houses, wow, possessor of lands or houses, sold them and 
brought the prices of the things that were sold. Saan nila binigay? Verse 35. And laid them down at the apostles' wow, feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he needed. So nakikita nyo po mga kapatid. Verse 37. And having land, look at, sold it and brought the money and laid it to the apostles' feet. So land, houses, ari-arian, binibenta, laid it to the apostles' feet. Ang gandang doktrina niyan ngayon. Kung i-apply ko yan. Ha, kasarap ng pas magiging pastor ng panahon na yon. Kasarap magiging evangelist ng panahon na yan. Kasi ibibenta niyo, ibibigay niyo sa akin eh. Kaya yun ang teaching ng mga kulto. Yan ang mga teaching ng mga ano, ano ngayon po mga kapatid. Pagdating sa chapter 5, may pinatay pa ang Panginoon, si Ananias at si, si, si Safira. Alam mo kung bakit? Dahil Safira. Namatay si Safira dahil Safira. Kasi siya, hindi nila binigay sa Apostle Spirit ang lahat may tinago sila. Ano nangyari? Naglay sila sa Holy Ghost. Patay. Chapter 5. So ganun po, ganun po ang dispensation na, 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 na even after po mga kapatid, tinuturo yung mindset sa kingdom. Kasi yun ang, yun ang tinatawag Mother Mary, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. The apostles were just faithful doon sa instruction sa kanila po mga kapatid. So ito, yun yung parable of the great ano po. Kaya alam nyo po ang nangyayari? Nung hindi dumating ang Panginoon, hindi na-establish ang kingdom. Alam nyo po ba sa ministry ni Paul? You could read that in 1 Corinthians 16. You could read that in Romans 15. Alam nyo po ano ministries ni Paul? Nagpapadala po siya ng support. Ini-encourage po niya lahat ng churches na kanyang i-establish. Na-establish. Natulungan ang Jerusalem saints. Ang mga poor saints sa Jerusalem. Bakit? Alam mo ano nangyari? Bakit naging mahirap sila? Dahil nabenta na lahat ang kanilang mga ari-arian. Wala na silang pera. Hindi na tuloy ang kingdom. Ano yun nangyari? So si Paul, pinatulungan niya lahat ng mga poor saints. Ang Corinthians, in-instruct niya. Ang mga, Pili- ang mga Philippians, in-instruct niya. Yung mga churches in Macedonia, yung in-instruct niya lahat ng mga Roman, mga na ang mga saints sa Rome, pinapadala na nandun ang mga instruction para yun sa mga poor saints. Naging mahirap sila. Ngayon, kailangan nilang pangkabuhayan. Bakit? Iba na ang, iba na ang dispensation. Kaya si, sila aposo, ah, sila Peter, dati hindi sila sanay magtrabaho kasi susunod lang sila sa Panginoon at okay lang lahat. E nung nagkaroon ng shift ng ministry. Nagkaroon na ng shift ng dispensation. Dito na sa dispensation of the grace of God. Na-reveal na ano ang kalooban ng Panginoon sa panahon na ito. Ano nangyayari? Magtrabaho tayo. Amen. Magsumikap tayo. Hindi lang para sa pamilya, but para sa ministries. Kaya si Apostle Paul, ano sabi siya? Tent maker siya. Ano sabi si Apostle Paul? Sabi niya, these ends have ministered to my necessities and all them that are with me. Hindi na siya nag-covet ng gold and silver. Hindi na siya nagsasabi, ilay niyo sa aking feet. Ang lahat ng inyong kayamanan, wala na siyang preaching na ganun. Kaya, bansinin mo ang mga churches at mga pastor. Meron silang mga sinasabi yung tawag nila, i-give up mo lahat. And that's your first fruit sa Panginoon. Yung mga bonus niyo at mga first fruit yun ninyo. Kaya every year, Kaya at the end, sino ang may bonus? Ang pastor. Kasi ang bonus ng mga member, naibigay lahat eh. Wala sila. Kaya sino ang pinakamasaya sa lahat? Yung nagsasabing ibigay nyo lahat. Kaya ano mayayari? Sabi niya, Pasko na. <laughs> Sinta ko. Umiiyak na lang. <laughs> Hanap-hanap daw niya ang kanyang bonus. Hanap-hanap kita. <laughs> I mean, we can laugh at that po mga kapatid because alam natin na merong pinaghugutan yan pero wrong application ng Biblia. And that's very sad also on that note. 
na gagamitin, gagawa ka nila ng trick because they will not rightly divide. Mga kapatid, thinking nila na ganun, kagaya sila ng mga apostol kung paano pinobridan, kung paano nakakuha ng fan, ganun din dapat. Tapos na tayo doon. Iba na ang panahon natin. Panahon natin ngayon is we are to, sabi doon, providing honest things not only in the sight of God but also in the sight of men. And alam nyo po ba yung providing honest things dyan? Ang context dun, giving. Hello? Kaya pag magpalok, ang, ang hindi mag rightly divide, maloko talaga, madisib talaga. Ingat tayo, kasi dyan may pinaghugutan yan sila ng mga wrong concept. Eh. Mga kapatid, should we give for the ministry? Yes, you should. But you are not obligated to sell all you have. Amen. You are not obligated na ano kasi malapit na ang ano. Eh, sabi nung, Bawal mag-save, bawal magkaroon ng bank account. Hindi, hindi bawal yan ngayon. Ha? But mga kapatid, nagtatrabaho tayo not to be rich. We don't labor to be rich. We labor to survive in this wicked world. We labor for the ministry. Naintindihan po ba natin? We labor to minister to others. Hindi mindset natin riches. Bakit? Ang mindset natin, Meron na tayong spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You are already blessed. And if God would would give us this good work or this ano po mga 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 ating ang tawag nito, ang ating mga mga trabaho, bibigyan tayo ng itong mga mga profession natin, ginagamit natin, hindi para iwanan, kundi para gamitin para sa Panginoon. Sa kanila Ibitawan mo lahat. Huwag ka mag-earn. Huwag ka na mag-ganito. Sumunod lang ka sa akin. And you will have riches in the kingdom. Hindi ganun. Hindi ganun ang mindset. Walang magtuturo sa atin ng ganun. Pag may magtuturo sa atin ng ganyan, delikado po tayo po mga atin. Umalis na kayo. Bihin ko na to. I'm not teaching you ano, pero talagang mali, maling mali talaga yung teaching na pastor na yan. Nung Y2K, yung Y2K, no? Nung ano po mga kapatid, ng na natawag po natin na um, yung millennium ba yung 2000 uh, year 2000 maraming mga pastors na nagpi-preach na sa two, year 2000 babalik ng Panginoong Hesus at isa sa mga biktima kung saan ang church nila ni Pastor Ben pero hindi sila naging biktima kasi bago pa dumating ang 2000 nagsialisa na sila kasi ang nagiging teaching ng kanilang pastor ay uh, ibenta mo na lahat, ibigay mo na lahat doon yung Acts 2. <laughs> Kasi babalik ng Panginoon at sasalubungin natin yung year 2000. Sasalubungin natin. Ano nangyayari? <laughs> ano nangyayari? Ginagawa. So, of course, alam nila na hindi po yun sa Biblia. Bago pa nangyari yung nagsielisan. Eh alam nyo ba nang ang, 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 ang daming naging mahirap ng 2000 ng mga Kristiyano? Kaya sinapaniwala sa mga bulaang propeta. Kung mga kapatid, eh hindi dumating. So ano nangyayari? By the way, wag mong gawin yun na kahit malapit na ang rapture, walang ganyang mentality. Na, wah, benta mo na lahat, lahat ganito, sa rapture na bukas. No, hindi darating. Pag hindi darating, ikaw lang ang kawawa. Kaya mag apply wisdom, magiging practical. Amen. Save for for ano po, something for survival, something for your family, something para sa mga necessities nyo and save for for the ministry. Amen. Save for the ministering of others. And how do we do that? Then continue to do what we're doing and bless God. Ang goal nun, hindi para maging mayaman, but so that we could have something to provide. That was the mindset of Paul. Ano sabi? Ano mindset ni Paul? Acts 20. Look at Acts 20. Ano mindset ni Paul? Pero woe is us na nagpapayaman ka na lang sa mundong ito. Merong instruction ng Bible dyan. Amen. Ano Acts 20? Anong sabi dito? Sabi ni the Apostle Paul, 
Sabi niya sa verse number 33, sabi niya, I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel. Look at that apostle. But look at, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities. Hands. So he's working. Sa necessities lang ba niya? Ang sarili lang ba niya iniisip? But anong sabi niya? To them that are with me. He labored not only for himself, but to them that are with me. Po mga kapatid. And look at that, verse number 35. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak. So why do we work? Why do we have to provide for ourselves? Not only for our necessities, but also to labor, to support the weak. Meron ding mga poor saints, may mga pangailangan. That's how we should do that. Amen. And nung sabi po mga kapatid, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. So yun po yung point. So, hindi ko ibig sabihin na ganito, na hindi tayo magbibigay. That's wrong. But rather, ilagay natin. Amen. Kung ibigay mo lahat, anong ibibigay mo pa? Kung iwanan mo na lahat, anong ibibigay mo pa? So yun ang point po mga kapatid. Amen? So that is the parable of uh, to sell all. Okay? Yung parable of the ano po, pearl of great price is to sell all. So yung parable na yan ay walang kinalaman sa panahon natin. Exa, walang kinalaman sa panahon natin. But yung parable na yun is pointing to the kingdom. Okay? And dapat po maintindihan natin at makita po natin, mga kapatid. Amen! Whew. Ito po, uh, hindi ko nga na-discuss pa itong preparation for tribulation. Nasa nature pa tayo of the kingdom. no? So, ma-explain mo, magikita mo yung nature of the kingdom sa mga parables. Okay, the next parable is Matthew 19 ulit, verse number 30. Matthew 19, verse number 30. Nakita natin yung parable kanina itong sell all you have at iwanan mo sa Matthew 19 pero dito tayo sa verse 30 but uh, many that are first shall be last and look at that and ang sabi many that are first shall be last so balikat and the last shall be first so yun po yung parable po na yan sa kingdom in the, ang nature ng kingdom first ang mga first ngayon will be last sa kingdom at ang mga last ngayon will be, so explain ko further. Let's go muna Matthew 24. Let's look at Matthew 24, verse 45 to 51. Look at Matthew 24, 45 to 51. Take note on this. Basahin ko. Who then is faithful and wise servants whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Continue. The Bible says, Blessed is that servant whom is Lord when he cometh shall be so doing. Verse 7. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, but an if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Verse 48. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Verse 50. And the Lord of that servant shall come in the day When he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, then look at verse fifty-one, and shall cut off him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now further, may verse pa ba? Okay. Now I'd like you to point out dito po mga kapatid tung da. The great shall be the last, and the least shall be the great. Okay, yun po yung other, other, other passages na magikita po natin. But in this parable, ano po ang point? Na kung ikaw, itong teaching niya, ikaw, itong teaching ni Jesus Christ, dito sa earthly ministry before the cross, sinasabi niya, sinasabi niya dito na kung ikaw ay sikat, kung ikaw ay powerful. Kung ikaw ay mayaman sa panahon po na ito, pagdating sa kingdom, ikaw ay ikaw yung mahirap, ikaw yung pinakamababa, ikaw yung pinakakulelat, 
Kumbaga, sabi nito, ito yung teaching. The first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Pero kung ikaw dito ay servant lang, lowly lang, poor, amen, or hindi man ganun, kaya kasi poor in the sense na wala kang position, you're nobody, you're unknown, pero you are a child of the kingdom. Pagdating sa millennium, pagdating sa millennial kingdom, ikaw naman yung great, ikaw naman yung first, sila naman yung last. Yung iba. Nakuhain po natin, yan ba ang teachings natin ngayon? Hindi. Although we could see a great principle po mga kapatid, pero kung ikaw dito sa panahon natin, listen, kung mayaman ka man sa panahon natin dito, mahirap ka man, kung ikaw ay ligtas, are you listening? Kung ikaw ay ligtas, parehas lang pagdating sa langit. Walang variation po mga kapatid. Amen. Kung ikaw man ay sikat, basta ligtas ha, kung ikaw may sikat o hindi, pagdating sa position mo, position ang pinag-usapan natin ha, sa, sa last time, pinag-usapan natin yung mga inheritance na na mga rewards at mga gan iba ibang pag-usap talking about position pantay-pantay lang there's no deg degradation ano po iba-iba doon po you are as safe as anybody you receive the same position as anybody kung ikaw man ay strong or weak kung ano man ang iyong iyong kung ikaw may engineer ikaw may janitor kung ikaw may doctor ikaw man ay driver o ikaw may whatever Pagligtas kayo parehas, parehas lang kayo sa ano, walang great at saka last. That is the teaching ng panahon po natin. Amen. And of course, by principle, maganda nga naman na magiging lowly tayo. Kasi in the eyes of God, you are great. Amen. Yung mga nagmamayabang sa panahon natin, in the eyes of God, you are, you are miserable. So of course, prince by principle po mga kapatid, but by position and by ano, Walang gano'n, no? Next is another principle po, mga kapatid, or another parable. Ito yung mga parables na tinitingnan natin sa Matthew chapter number 22, verse 14. Matthew 22, 14. Many are called, but few are chosen. So, kung titingnan po natin yung context po niyan po, mga kapatid, yun po yun, no? Many are called, but few are chosen. Are chosen. Let's let's go muna sa Matthew twenty verse sixteen. Tapos balikan po natin tong Matthew chapter number twenty two. Ano sabi? Matthew chapter number twenty verse sixteen. So the last shall be the first, okay, and the first shall be the last. Ito yung isa. For many be called, but few chosen. Okay. So balik tayo sa Matthew twenty two. So titingnan po natin yung sa Matthew twenty two po mga kapatid. In the context ng Matthew 22 sa verse number 14, nakikita po natin kung aatras ka po mga kapatid, ito yung, ito yung parable ng verse 2, verse 2. Look at. And the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. So again, wala tayong kinalaman po dito. Kung babasahin mo sa context po mga kapatid, ito ay may kinalaman po sa millennial kingdom. Kasi kingdom of heaven nga eh. And wala tong kinalaman sa church age, sa body of Christ, or sa dispensation of the grace of God. Itong verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them which were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. So they were invited to the wedding, but they would not come. By the way, ito po, ito pong kingdom na ito is actually parang wedding ceremony ng Panginoon para it's like an unto a wedding para sa bansang Israel. So bago po sila papasok, there was an invitation. There was an invitation at anong sabi dito and sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. And again, he sent forth the other servants saying, tell them which are bidden Behold, I have prepared my dinner, and my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways unto his farm and to another to his merchandise. So ang in-invite, hindi pinansin, bumalik sila sa kanilang trabaho, bumalik sila sa mga negosyo. So sabi dito, and verse 6, And the remnant and took his servants, Okay, and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Bira ang ginawa sa mga servants na pinadala, pinatay. Amen. At 
Sino to? And entreated them spitefully and slew them. Pinatay. Nang nag-invite. Can you imagine? Nag-invite ka tapos papatayin ka. Isn't it what happened to the prophets? Isn't it what happened to the apostles? They were inviting them to come to that where they were killed. Look at verse number 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their cities. Alam niyo anong nangyayari po sa Jerusalem in AD 70? They were burned. They were destroyed. Po mga kapatid. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready. And but they were bidden, were not worthy. Kaya nga sabi niya, Go ye therefore into the highways, as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So it was now open to everybody. Bid them to their marriage. And sabi, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And that, that happened in the, in the tribulation period. And when the king came, we have a separate lesson on this po mga kabatid, as we go on no? sa, sa, sa teachings po na ito. But just for the sake na ma-run ma through lang natin ang parable. And verse number 11, And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a certain man which had not a wedding garment. So wala siyang wedding garment. So of course you have to be there. At ano nangyari? And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou either not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. So, lahat, everyone, everyone is called. Everyone is invited, but few are chosen. So, sino po yun? Yung makapasok sa kingdom, they are the chosen. They are those who responded and they are those who have the wedding garments. So ano po yung mga wedding garments po nila po mga kapatid? And they have to pass through. At lahat ng iyon po mga kapatid. So nangyayari. So I'll explain on that and paano sila makakuha ng garment. And if you read the book of Revelation, and they should have to have that garment, the righteousness of the saints is that garment, is that wedding garment. That garment should be washed, should be ano po mga kapatid? You could find that in Matthew, uh, Revelation 15. You can find that in Revelation 19 and that garment, which is the righteousness of the saints. So, yun lang. Hindi ibig sabihin na natawag ka or in-invite ka, maka-inherit ka na. But you have to do what was required for them. So, that, 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 that feast and that wedding happened in the millennial kingdom po, mga kapatid. So, walang kinalaman sa panahon po natin, po mga kapatid. Lahat ng tinawag po dito po, mga kapatid, sa panahon natin, ay pipiliin ng Panginoon. Pinili ng Panginoon. Hindi po few are chosen. <laughs> ano? Kaya ang mga electionist, yung mga Calvinist, yun ang iko-quote nila na verse. <laughs> and that is not even talking sa ating panahon po mga kapatid. Not talking to our time. Okay? Anyway, uh, sige. Ilan na lang po mga kapatid. Pito kayo to eh. Matthew 7 po mga kapatid. You shall know by their fruit. And Matthew 7 verse 16. At yun yung basis mo na ito po chapter 7 verse 16 para sa basa and you shall know them amen by their fruit do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles so you shall know them by their fruit. Now if you look at the context of that parable also po mga kapatid makikita po natin yan. Ano yan? Sa, uh, Matthew um, chapter 7 verse number 16. So let me let me start with that, mga kapatid. So this is another parable na makikita po natin about this corrupt tree and all of that na, na pansinin po natin na tinutukoy po ng Panginoong Jesus po dito. So this is about how to spot a, to enter into that, into in, enter into that kingdom once again. Kaya sabi niyo sa verse 13, look at, Verse 13, sabi niya, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, 
and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many therewith go in their eat. And because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be find it. Beware of false prophet, for which they come, po mga kapatid, unto you sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, and you shall know them by their fruits. Do men grapes uh, gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit; neither there can be corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And not everyone that saith unto them, Look at Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So that's the context po mga kapatid about that. So ibig sabihin, ang basis ng pagpasok po sa kingdom of heaven ay fruits, works, performance. Tinihan po natin, is that, is that the basis to enter heaven? No. The basis is grace. Amen. How do you know that they are not by their, by their fruits? You shall know them. And these are, every time you look at the word fruit in the Bible, it's always work. It's a work of righteousness. It's a work of holiness. It's a work. Kaya nga, pag sinabi ng, pag sinabi ng pang, pang, Panginoon, bring therefore fruit, meet for repentance. And that is synonymous, bring works, meet for repentance because fruits are works. So, and ang context, obviously, in verse number 20, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's about entering into the kingdom of heaven, not entering heaven. Iba yung heaven at saka kingdom of heaven. Okay? Take note on that. Another passage po, mga kapatid, uh, the Lord leaves, then He will return. Is not this parable is not also talking to, not talking to uh, our age, but this is talking to the kingdom, and this is the nature. Ang, ang point ko lang dito na maobserve mo how do they enter into the kingdom? How do they enter to the kingdom? And you will see this in the parables, mga kapatid. Okay, ang makapasok sa kingdom is ang Israel at ang iba po mga kapatid and they have to sell all and they have to be the last to be the first in the kingdom and although you are called but only few are chosen and also you can know those that will inherit the kingdom by their fruits okay by their fruits and the next thing na makita po natin in Matthew 25 let's start with verse 14 Another passage in Matthew 25, verse number 14, as they are called on this, the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is a man, is as a man traveling in a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Let's read on and up to verse 20, the next verse. The Bible says, And unto them gave he five talents, and to another two, this is the parable of the talents, and another one, and to every man according to his to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So umalis na yun, nag-iwan na siya ng mga talents, tapos went his journey. And verse 16, Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And verse number 17, And likewise, he that received two talents, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and his and hid his Lord's money. So tinago lang niya. Hindi niya ininvest. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So there's reckoning. And look at, and so he that received five talents came and brought the other five talents. And Lord, thou deliverest unto five talents. And behold, I gain beside them five talents more. Continue. The next one is, and his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. And look at this. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou, sabi dito, into the joy of the Lord. So gagawin silang ruler.
ruler over many things dito sa kingdom. Kailan sila magiging ruler sa kingdom? So, there is a rewarding. Tapos, they will, uh, and the, the re, their reward will determine their place and their role in the kingdom. So, they will become ruler. Ang other passage would say, they, you become ruler over many cities. Let's look at the next part. Anong sabi? And he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest and uh, me two talents, and behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Verse number 23. His Lord said unto them, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over many, uh, over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Now, verse 24. The next one, po mga kapatid. And we which had one talent, and came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, and reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast... Can you imagine that? Can you imagine this person who has been made steward of God, accused God of what? Accused God of being a hard man? You are reaping where thou hast not sown? Parang kumbaga, Lord, tumatanggap ka lang lang naman ng mga bagay. I know that, na ganun ka lang. But verse 25, ano sabi niya? And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. O ito yung binigay mo. So hindi nagpa-prosper. Verse 26, ano sabi? His Lord answered and said unto them, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed, Alam mo naman yun, verse 27, And thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury, verse 28. And take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents, the next one, verse 29, For unto everyone that shall be given, he shall have abundance, but from him that shall not shall be taken away even that which he hath, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there where shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, how do we know that this is not our time and age? First and foremost, it's the parable of the kingdom. And pangalawa, oh, judgment seat of Christ yan. Mga kapatid, sa judgment seat of Christ, hindi ka itatapon sa impyerno. Hindi yan judgment seat of Christ. So hindi applicable. Sa, pailan po ito. This happened in the tribulation period na bibigyan sila ng Panginoon, ingatan nila yon, i-invest po nila yon. And mga kapatid, pagpasok sa kingdom, may accounting pagdating sa second coming ng Panginoon, i-judge sila according kung paano nila pinaprosper ang, in, in, ang pinagkatiwala sila sa kanila ng Panginoon. At ang hindi iningatan at hindi ginawa ang mga bagay na iningatan nila ng Panginoon, una, not only wala silang wala silang place sa kingdom wala silang ruler rulership or reign sa kingdom but yung mga unprofitable servant na yun ay itatapon pa sa outer darkness and that is good as hell po mga so so can you imagine how many preachings that we heard about this topic about that parable without even telling them the actual application and that's the problem po mga kapatid because akala mo yun ang mangyayari talaga. Kaya i-apply nila yung pagtubo, pag ganito, ganyan, pero pagdating sa casting ng outer darkness, ay, 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 hindi nila babasahin or hindi nila isama. So ang actual niyan is makikita po natin ay para po doon sa millennial kingdom. It's preparation. So binigay ko lang sa inyo. And last, yung Matthew 24 verse 42. Matthew 24 verse 42. Yun yung nabasa natin kanina, watch ye and prepare. And ito yung mga servants na kailangan makita. Watch therefore, for ye know not what the are your Lord that cometh. So they are to prepare and they are to be ready and they are to watch. Ano yung, ano yung papakinggan nila? Ano yung iwa-watch na? They're not watching for the rapture. They're watching for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Tindihan po natin. Watching for the second coming and preparation po for the kingdom. Again, reading the context of those passages will allow you to see that itong mga bagay na ito ay hindi po applicable sa church age. Okay? Hindi po applicable, sir. Ano saan sila applicable? 
they're all applicable sa preparation for the kingdom at sa kingdom itself. And they describe the nature of what will happen sa kingdom, sino ang papasok, paano papa- pumasok sa kingdom, paano may inherit ang kingdom, at anong blessing sa kingdom. And all of those parables are pointing to this place, but never here. Although you could get some practical application, but the actual application ng verses na yun ay para po sa millennial kingdom. And they describe as the nature of the kingdom. So that was the thing na hindi po natin na-discuss po mga kapatid last time. And diniscuss natin ngayon. I thought that it mabilis lang ako dito pero hindi pala. That's why I prepared number nine, preparation for the tribulation. Pero next week, yun po ang ating pag-uusapan. Sa, sa next week po mga kapatid, yung, ito po yung the teachings of Christ in preparation for the tribulation. So, hindi lang sila tinuruan to prepare for the kingdom. They're not just taught to prepare for the kingdom. But ito po ang pangsyam na tinuro ng Panginoon is preparation for the tribulation. Not dito. So, walang preparation, walang teaching na mag-prepare kayo, my church age na darating. Walang ganon. Okay? Walang my dispensation of the grace. Pinaprepare sila sa ano po. Babasahin po natin ang Matthew 24, Matthew 25 in a nutshell. Yun yung discussion natin next week. Matthew 24, 25, in a nutshell. Yun ang dapat nating pag-uusapan sa next week po, mga kapatid. So the teachings of Christ in preparation for the tribulation period. And I hope our lesson this morning help you in a little way and get, provides you little understanding po, mga kapatid, and deliverance also from many, many false teachings na, na talagang umiiral sa panahon nga natin ngayon. At salamat sa available truth. Salamat po sa mga teachings na pwede po nating may share at available po sa atin. At sana po ay nakatulong po sa ating lahat. Yun lang po ang meaning ng mga lessons po natin is just maigamit sana ito para sa iyong sweet relationship sa Panginoon and even sa iyo pong uh, Christian walk na ma-apply natin excellently ang mga bagay na ito. So I hope clear na at this time yung mga teachings ng Panginoong Hesus na dami na nating naituro po mga kapatid na hindi talaga pwede na ating paghaluin, ating i-rumble, but rather i-rightly divide, i-rightly put and place. Lahat, i-test yung mga pagkakaiba at ano po mga kapatid, i-apply sa tamang panahon, sa tamang mga tao para hindi po tayo magkakamali sa ating paglilingkod at hindi natin ma-miss ang will of God sa panahon po natin ngayon. And thank you very much and let's pray. Lord, bless those lessons and those teachings. Sana ikaw po patuloy ang mag-glorify. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless everyone and glory, glory to God. Have a good day.